everyone, Richard Carlton. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. It's one o'clock at fmtrain.tv, where we do great training every day with the help of a bunch of awesome moderators and other people who want to contribute to the FileMaker community. Why are we here is because, well, frankly, all of you are building great FileMaker solutions. We want to answer your questions, talk about what's going on in your life, how you're making your solutions better. If you have questions, you're stuck, ask us questions. Now, every day I pick a different topic, or I should say we pick a different topic. And what I want to do is I'm going to hit my little button right here and I'm going to bring up the upcoming broadcast. Schedule basically is only five. So there should be probably a six record that should be on here. Margaret, we don't see it just yet. I would point that out that the broadcast scheduling person has fallen down on the job. So today is going to be another add-on day with Calvin. And then next week will be the third and final add-on day with Calvin, at least for now unless Calvin comes up with some other amazing add-ons. And so, uh, and then what we're doing is we're going to roll them all together next week and put them in a new version of Wolfpack. Uh, so we'll cover that tomorrow. Uh, Christian Schmidt has decided that we're going to be talking about PDFs uh, with the Monkey Bread plugin. I don't normally tell people buy a plugin, but Monkey Bread is one that we own. We do use it. It's quite good. It does a lot. It's really great. And it solves a lot of problems, a lot of basic functionality that you don't have in the FileMaker platform. So it's really useful. Then Thursday uh, this week, it seems like it should be Wednesday, but we've already lost. Monday went away, right? Because we were on a holiday. Um, command line with a FileMaker server. So if you're using FileMaker server on Mac or Windows, whether it's in your office or up in the cloud, there are secret little command line little secrets like, it's a secret, right? And you could do a command line that, whatever. It gives you the winning lottery numbers, all sorts of interesting command lines that do important things that we really haven't covered too much. And so, and then Friday we have Dead Bird. I we want to point out we're going to go back to Jabbox. I'm going to try to get the Fibbage, uh, the Fibbage uh, game to play. We're going to try to do that. That will be a lot of fun because uh, Fibbage is where we put out a definition or a thing and someone invents a definition about it or something like that term. And then we all get the vote as which one we think is real or whatever that is. It's quite good. Cool. Well, welcome everyone uh, to another awesome broadcast day. So that's the upcoming schedule. As a reminder, the live trainings are really useful. We have a, variety, a wide variety of topics that are covered. The moderators kind of come and go and do their things. They're very helpful. We appreciate it. Um, but not every day is going to be for everyone. Uh, these are recorded. We do clean them up a little bit. And then you will get to see the recorded one within a day or two with the video player. So let's talk about that real quick. So if, you're, if you go to fmtrain.tv, you can check out the current courses that we have. But we really don't sell the courses individually. We recommend you buy the bundle. The bundle is awesome. It allows you to get all our training for a year. And we even have a two-year deal if you're interested. If you uh, want to check these out, uh, press on either one of these right here. This one comes with FileMaker Pro, et cetera, et cetera. This one's just a training only. So very interesting uh, stuff. We also made a minor update to the book that went out. For those of you who wonder about that, we added a couple pages on low code and some other minor stuff. But we continue to update the book. Went to Amazon. Uh, that was done. Uh, if you already have the paper version of the book, you're not missing much. It's another page and a half of text. Uh, if you want the current video player, you download the video player. You press the button, you download it. That allows you to see all the recorded uh, live streams. Plus, if you put your subscription number in there, it turns on all the great videos for you. Uh, all the FileMaker Pro course. It's like 90 hours of, of highly dedicated training. It's really good. Different than kind of this conversation format that we have right now. So I want to welcome Calvin. Calvin, are you there? You want to show us your smiling face? Because all I see is your screen. I'm here. Uh, what, Calvin, what do you do and why do we care? But why should, why should we on the internet care about you, Calvin? So uh, we're going to be, last, last time we met and I was on the live stream, we talked about a few add-ons. Those were the, the slide panels uh, and updated to the new uh, Morpheus uh, style and the new Morphism look. And then the uh, popover and uh, how you can use those in your app to kind of speed up development and, and make things look nice. Today, I have a couple more add-ons. One is a progress bar that I like to use to show what's going on in an app. And all, if there's a, a long script or a long process uh, that's going on. And the other add-on we're going to look at is the image cropping app, which we've looked be at before as just a, a really cool 
uh, in, in interaction with the web viewer on FileMaker, but now it's uh, we, we've updated that demo file to be an add-on, so it's real easy to get it uh, plugged into your app and uh, cropping images and and uh, and that. Uh, so, so you have that additional ability with your containers. And uh, we'll we'll start off looking at the we'll start look off by looking at the add-ons, and then we're I have a, a copy of FM Starting Point that I just downloaded. So. Is what FM starting point looks like if you download it and yeah, uh, and the we'll... current version, which is still fairly attractive and good looking, right? Um, but it's not the super hot, sexy supermodel in Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, right? This is like the basic kind of, you know, this was the hot thing five years ago. So anyway, right. So right. what are you doing for us, Calvin? So here I've got uh, two zip files that are the files that you'll be sent at the end of this. Let's look at the which one do we want to do first? Uh, the image crop or the progress bar? Did you have preference? Do Let's progress go. bar first. Okay, that's what I was thinking. So I'm going to open up the progress bar. And so a uh, little background on this one. I was using the Nick Hunter's progress bar in a few different apps. And about the third time I built it, it's not difficult to build, but about the third time I did it, I thought, you know, this really should be an add-on so I don't have to go through all this effort of building this every time I want it. Uh, so here's uh, what, what, the, uh, what, what the card will look like. And uh, you can type up here to see what it will say. This is um, uh, script 104 or something. And you'll see how it will look on, that, uh, on the, the card window. And that, I'm going to select this demo. So you see this, it brings up this card window. You can put any text in there that you want and it, it, you can see the progress bar complete. And uh, it's pretty simple. The demo one and two will do the same thing. It just uses a different script, uh, scripting method to do it. And uh, I, I also have different styles in here. So if I say uh, dialogue options, select this dialogue options button going to take just a second to uh, fill up my screen with these different progress bars. And so you can say, okay, this, this FM starting point one is the one that looks, will look best in my app. So you can use that one. We've got uh, red downtown, green energy, two launch pad versions. And then the, this one's based on the uh, new morphism one uh, style right here. So that's, what's going on there. I'm going to go ahead and now that I have this file, I will select to install the add-on. And I'll install it. Take just a second. And the uh, so it, br it brought up this uh, finder. Did you already add it or you just added it? What did you do? I, yeah, I, so I just, just selected install add-on and okay. that installed it on this machine. Okay. And I kind of have this overview to, to say, say what's, what's involved with this one. Uh, we've got a single table. We can take a look at that if we want. And it just has four uh, fields here. They're all global. And those are the four fields that we display on the, uh, on the card. So I can say, this script is running. And we are updating records so this this is just to see what it will look like on your in that card okay. while it's running mm. so the uh is we've got uh just two scripts the progress bar set fields and the clear globals and then uh there's our fields we just talked about those there's a custom function that sets the uh that sets the progress bar mm. And then uh, we've got some instructions and some notes on how the demos work. So I, I already installed it, and just by selecting this install add-on button. So let's go over to FM Starting Point, and I will. You have to install it first on your machine, and then you have to install it into your app as well. So let's go over here to add-ons in the left pane third pane over, select the plus button. And here's our list of add-ons. I'm just going to search for uh, progress. 
And here's the progress bar. I'll go ahead and choose that one. And it's going to take just a second to install that on the uh, into FM starting point. But once that's done, it brings over the table, the custom functions, the scripts, everything, every every piece of that uh, that file. Uh, will the Wolfpack be added to? Uh, will the progress bar be added to Wolfpack? Yes, all of Calvin's things that he's been working on the last last uh, week ago, today, and then next week. All these sets, we're giving them away individually, so you're going to get this today. I'm going to give you this link today. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the, you get the individual samples today of the add-ons. Then next week, we're taking all the samples that we've collected over three broadcasts, loading them into a new wolf pack. Does that make sense? So moving along, Calvin, what is your... Okay. Do you want to... So, the next yeah, we, so we, ins we installed the add-on, and we'll see that the... Uh, if we go under tables, mm -hmm. we'll see there's the new putting creation order so we can see it at the bottom. There's the new progress bar. It's added to the relationship graph. Because it's all global, it doesn't need to be uh, related to anything. So it, it, you can just let that sit where it, where it lands. And uh, I'll, I'll just take it off of our, uh, what is this called? Our comments there in the relationship graph. And if we look under the scripts, we'll see at the end of our scripts list, in the scripts to workspace, we've got the new progress bar area. And then the down here at the end of our layouts, again, we've got all of our layouts and we can use any one of these uh, themes. So let's go ahead and just put a button. Let's say we're doing any kind of script we want to do and we want to tell somebody about the, what progress is going on. I'm just going to add this button. And I'll just call this one demo. And it will say perform script. And we'll check, we'll just select the demo script that we have. Down here at the bottom, demo one. And let's go to browse mode. So now when I select demo, we'll see that, Hang that on, my, my screen, progress bar. Okay, there's a little delay with your screen updating there. So yeah, so so when you select demo, what happens? Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. So there it is. It's it's in FM starting point. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, let's set this up for the startup script because that's a cool place to see this happen, and uh, and we can set this up. Kind of walk through that. So let's go over to the. Let's go to the layouts and we'll open up the opening window where it says welcome to FM starting point and welcome to FMSP 20 and we'll go over to our add-ons and we'll drag and drop this right onto the layout. Maybe move it over here and I'm going to remove the anchoring and maybe make this a little taller and then uh, go to browse mode so now that's in there it's not uh but it's not running yet so we we got to update our startup script right to reference that there uh, reference the this brings up a really uh, good question I want you to finish this mm -hmm. but I I have concerns about yeah. this right because, okay um, yeah uh, so, you so we it, might because I'm sure it'll demo great but I'm is anyone so does anyone want to guess what my concerns might be about this specific implementation right so I'll let other people guess online uh, but you keep going Kyle uh, okay. agent Chevy no uh, so there's no nope, for data. I got two demos here okay. for how to set this up, and one is for uh, you can set the fields directly, and have it um, and have it. You can set the fields directly, and that takes up a little more space. I also have it set up to run a subscript, which is a little faster to set up, 
and a little more elegant when you're looking through the yeah. script. Yeah. So you're, you're just going to go to your startup script and you're going to spread it out in there a little bit, right? Yep. So here is, I went ahead and copied this and we will say that step one is uh, right here we are, uh, we'll call this uh, write generic, we'll, we'll just say write generic audit trail okay. uh, or begin session. How about that? Step one, say begin session and we'll leave it at 10% and we don't need to have the, the pause in there. Was that my pause or your pause? Who, where did that pause come from? Uh, that was my pause. I, okay. I pasted that in there, okay. and uh, it, it was to so that you could see it refresh. I didn't. I don't want it paused for a minute. And let, we can look at these vari the variables that we're setting, and one is what do we want the progress bar to stay, what percentage it is, and how long we want it to pause. It needs to pause just so that the refresh happens. Uh, but we. Is it like point. is it is it zero point two is the refresh or is zero one good enough? Because I think Nick was saying he thought it was tenth of a second or twentieth of a second. Um, yeah. So the zero uh, zero point zero one has been working for me. Okay. If, okay. But you cannot. But it it's uh it, it's available there. You can change it to whatever you want. So the the next thing we'll do is, um, we'll say this is check preferences, because we're checking. What's going on there? Step two. Check preferences. We'll give this, uh, we'll put this at 20%. And what's, you can put a calculation in there because we're, we're, it's, it's just a calculation area. So if you're looping through scripts, you can say we're on record X of uh, the found count and uh, decide whether you can have that percentage be dynamic based on the where you are in the found set, which is pretty cool. Okay, next step in the startup script, we'll say we are uh, checking the first start. We'll say is first start. And we'll put that at 30%. Let's go scroll down. And I don't think we need to re reference this one. We'll call this one QuickBooks Setup. Step four. QuickBooks, we're just gonna make this a little fast and I'll just say QuickBooks there. And then step five, FM gallery, put that at 50%. And then we will do staff setup. Step six, staff set up. So you can have this typed in, or, uh, man, so in this sense, I'm typing something in the text, what, the text that I want to display, but you could have that set up as a calculation as well. And uh, like we're saying, in a fa if you're tracking the found set, or if you wanted to do uh, any any other calculations in there? Let's go skip to the end of the staff area. Sometimes you'll see these startup scripts organized with subscripts, and so that is uh, is one way to make it a little easier to uh, see what's going on on these things. <laughs> this works as well. The uh, okay, so I'm going to say this last one is load screen. We're just going to say load main screens. Uh, 
up to 70%. And then I'm going to just say load home screen. That'll be the end. You stop on uh, home screen. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out and see how it looks. So we're closing it down and we'll open it right back up. Okay. Yeah, you have to kind of like really, really, really close it. Yeah, it has to be has to be really close so we get that startup script running again. Okay, let's see how this goes. And there's our progress bar. Dude, it looks so like Nick did this. Yeah, I took it straight from Nick. So the <laughs> uh, Real, did you really or not really? Did you take it from Nick? Uh, so the 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 way it it's the style is from Nick. Yes. But the the mechanics isn't quite the way Nick has it. I had to make some adjustments to how it actually works so that it would work as an add-on and I could reference it anywhere. And uh, and so that it would I could have it uh, one script that does it from any location. Uh, Michael, Michelle Gravel says, Richard, you worry that this is not a lean design potential. So let me talk about what I was concerned about here real quick. Calvin originally had this in a card style window. I thought, and maybe you said this, you were going to bring it across in a card style window. If you inject a card style window into the middle of a process that's running, remember you're going to block creation of new windows, right? Because a card style window it ha it has to be effectively the last window for that file, right, Calvin? In that, uh, that that's that's uh, not quite. So you can have a so, – so there's two ways to do it. One is the drag and drop onto the layout mm -hmm. if you want to display it. The other way is having the card style, and I use both. So on the startup, I, I use the, uh, the, the drag and drop. Right. And then for a process, I'll bring up that card style window. And because it's global, I can reference it uh, uh, from, from a another window. So okay, the stop, card style stop, will but, display. Okay, uh, yes, it and you're display. allowed to have another window open as long as it's not a card style window. Okay, back up. Let's walk through this. This is kind of a, yeah. it's a subtle point. If if you pop a card and then you want to say create a new window after that, can you do that? I don't know. Uh, yes. So should, let's go ahead and check let, it out. Let, let's do because if you just inject a card and then remember it's modal, so it has to be like the frontmost thing, right? And then you start right and you assume that you could like we're because when startup starting point runs, I think we start pop windows off screen. We start up windows off screen. You can't mm -hmm. see them, they're hidden. This things are happening right and so if you jam or interfere with that then you're gonna have problems because if you say create a new window and FileMaker goes not gonna create it because there's already a card style window and I can't allow any more creation of other windows right then right. you're gonna have a big problem uh, Kyle says uh, so you can do a new so let's uh, so I have a card style window open okay so Kyle is that's... expressing my, my concern so why don't you yeah, okay. go ahead and do this so I've got this new window, pretty simple. And I've got this card style window open right now. Okay. And so what I'll do is I'll open a card style window and then open a second window where I, uh, if you want to have it in a different process, I'll say new window. Mm -hmm. And there's my new window. So it's not a card window, but it, it's just a regular uh, window. It can go behind there and I can do some process in it. I can set those global fields from the new window. All right, well, Kyle, Kyle's, Kyle just said, I have not been able mm -hmm. to create a new window once a card window is already open. FileMaker won't let me. So K Kyle's issue is the same as my issue is, is that obviously you don't want to – if you already wrote a process and then you inject your uh, progress bar in there and it screws up the process you already have, no bueno, right? But right. you're clearly – so as long as you don't create another card, and I know you can't have two cards, but I thought once you had a card open, you were like modally locked into that. Is there options for that? Yeah, so you are you are locked into it on that on that. Uh, you can't interact with the window be behind it, but you can create a new window. So, so let's try with a floating window and see if that works. 
So I have I always just use a document window. I haven't used any other windows. I know if I don't, you open I don't, a card, all I use is a document. Card, all I use is document and card. The other windows are legacy windows. No, pretty much no one's using those recently. So, so it allows okay. you to pop a new window because I just did it. Kyle, yeah. I, I swear, I, I me and Kyle are thinking the same thing. At least I'm thinking what he said. Yeah. So was, this is going to give us an error this time because you can't have a card within a card. So let's see what what error that gives us. So this is saying card window, and it three. says error three, command is unavailable. So, uh, and the, so there's two ways you could do this. Either uh, I would pop the card at the beginning of the process, and then the uh, every time you want to refresh it, you would navigate back to the window, uh, refresh it, and then go continue your process in the other window. And then that way you see the progress on it, or you could ha have the card window open and then open up a second window where you do your processes because it's global, changing the field in that other window will change it in this window. And then you would close your process window and then close the card window. Okay. Yeah, I just my if you're integrating this from the beginning, it's not an issue, but if you're gluing this mm -hmm. like on top of your startup script, uh, I was like concerned that you would block processes in the startup script because they would be popping windows and this would block it. Clearly it's not blocking it. Somewhere in my mind, I've right. really got it glued in that once I have a card, I can't pop any other window at all. I have to deal with that card and then dismiss the card before I start popping other things. But clearly you can pop. Yeah, it might be a best practices. The, uh, so <laughs> well, with, yeah, yeah. so with, uh, in the demo, we actually we ha have to open the new window at the beginning and close it at the end in the startup in the implementation and that with that startup script we already had that we already had that we yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah we we didn't open any new windows okay cool so that's pretty that's a neat one a lot of people ask for progress bars it's about as good as it's going to get because basically in any progress bar even if it was built into filemaker you'd have to say set the here's the percentage go update Right here's the percentage mm -hmm. go update, and basically what he's done in the startup script is he's put a, a percentage in his case a title, and then a and then an update. Right, so um, very useful, very useful. We like that. We actually have it in the uh, the same Nick uh, progress bar is in the video player. Right, so anyway. Right. And by the way, yeah, the new video player X26. For those of you who missed that, we found out that there was a bug or X46, the new one, has. Uh, <laughs> The fixes in there for that so that's great so if we go over here we have was it, or was it over here where's the video player oh there it is the video player right here so once you do you tell it to download the latest videos you say so we have the same kind of thing running we actually have an outline of it there uh, yours it doesn't have the outline right calvin if you right have the video player yeah i but could you fix that could you add the outline to that yeah so the uh yeah so in, in if we look at this uh, i'm just going to say close window on that card and let's say I, I don't want the that style I can go to the demo script mm -hmm. that we have here mm -hmm. and I can pick hang on let me go full screen here there we go okay so I, I can pick any one of those styles so we've got okay a uh, so right now I'm using the FMSP style, and then I I could select a different layout. We could go with um, I think the Morpheus the Neumorphism one has a outline. Okay, um, so, so you have the that. different styles, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and save that. Let's try it out. As dumb as this is, this is one of like yeah, it's got the outline there. It's, an out it's can't really see it really great, but it's the it's really it's really light. Yeah. But that's pretty uh, pretty slick. I like that. So um, important to be able to do this kind of stuff. Uh, I wonder how the progress bar would work in WebDirect because cards work slightly differently. Yeah, listen, once again, I keep telling people go easy on the WebDirect because this is kind of like I would consider a peripheral kind of capability. And I think, yeah, I don't know. Have you yeah, tried it my, on WebDirect? My thought is if, if you're doing any process processing like that where you would need a a uh, a progress bar at least for scripting on WebDirect. The um, 
I try not to do it. I, I try to use PSOS to do it just so you don't have to mess with those windows. Um, and of course, then, sure it's gonna, it, then it's going to be hard to have progress bars on a PSOS because PSOS won't let you don't really know where you're at. So, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, good I know. Point. It's kind of an interesting one, right? Once again, well, I, I from a strategic standpoint, uh, Clar Claris, when this gets back to them trying to communicate with me, they're trying to make a more web friendly product, I think. And they said that's kind of their center of gravity is kind of this web more web friendly. I think. I don't know what's going to happen with WebDirect. I think it's going to get revamped or made better or something. But I think that I don't think anyone's happy with the current state of WebDirect. So I, I expect it to get better. I say that loosely. I don't really know what that means, except that they keep kind of saying that in a kind of a foreshadowing sort of way. One of the things they want to talk to me about. So um, I think that it's kind of a kind of it almost handicaps uh, Claris a little bit. They don't have such a great web client for it needs to be better i think it does need to be better so anyway uh probably means edge or chromium web viewer well that's different uh the edge of chromium web viewer comes in 19.3 that's not uh that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about strategic nuclear weapons here is what i'm talking about i'm not talking about a tactical bazooka that some guy shoots at your bradley uh, armored personnel carrier out in the desert so um RIA I have not is a way to go. I'm not with, sure what uh, RIA is. Direct. What is R David Angel said RIA is a way to go. In my humble opinion, what is RIA? Uh, do you mean using the external CSS and Reliance? Uh, rich internet application. Yeah, well, I think that's their center of gravity. The problem is they also understand that on premise is super important and, and it's a de it's a, de a defining capability that their competitors can't match and so they're trying to figure out how to like do that and also do keep the on-premise stuff going at the same time in a rich way and beyond that i don't have a clue what they're doing because you can already see that in in fact we'll be talking about that in 19.3 a little bit they've Im improved their quick and dirty web uh, builder like their no code kind of version of the thing in pro we haven't given it much love here because frankly in 19.2 it's sufficiently stupid that i don't want to waste my time but it's supposed to be better in 19.3 i've got to go play with it so that way i'm prepared to demonstrate it for everyone so we can see it uh calvin why don't you give us the next add-on before we run out of time you got 15 minutes yeah we're, we're we're coming short so uh i'm going to give you a record in here and it would be really nice if we had a picture in here for you i've got a picture but uh, it's really hard to see, so it'd be really nice to be able to crop that. Yeah, there's the image. That's kind of hard to see for you. So let's go ahead and I'll, we'll show this image crop app, I'll, or this add-on. And so this is one we've looked at before, but not as an add-on. So let me go ahead and open this. So in this case, we took a sample file that was uh, available, and we added it, and we updated it to work as an add-on and made some adjustments to it. There's uh, two main scripts that we want, a start and an end that you'll, you'll want to, uh, to see. And the uh, single table again, there's a layout with web, web viewer that allows you to update the image. So let's go ahead and say install. And it's going to take just a minute to do this. And I'll think about that. And so it, now it has installed. Now we got it. Once it's installed on this machine, I'll need to install it on the app itself. So we'll go into layout mode and select the add ons pane and the plus button to add a new one. And it's thinking about it. It's not responding. That is different. Try that one more time before I decide to quit FileMaker. Oh, no. Oh, no. Where's the progress bar? What do you mean, Moki, where the progress bar? We're kind of done with progress bar. We're moving on. Okay, I'm going to quit FileMaker oh. real quick. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay, yeah, negative. But you might be running 18 like Wally, then in which case it's not going to work, right? So that was what, 16, 17, 18, and 19 down there. I think that's what it was. Uh, yep, 16, 17, 18, 19. I finally deleted FileMaker 10. It did, wouldn't open, but it was still on here. Yeah, I was playing with 10 the other day. All right, Calvin, we're all waiting on okay, you. Okay, round two. Round two, here we go. Um, there it, it opened up right away. So I haven't had that problem happen before. Let's go ahead and select the... Did I see a B-U-T-T, -T, a butt? Something about butts on there? Okay. Uh, well, there's there's probably one. a button. Oh, okay. I thought you said at something about butts, and I'm like, okay, hold on <laughs> to your butts. All right, so we're building dependencies. This is that crappie app that the, the, the Japanese FileMaker developers made that I love, literally love this thing. It's like one of the most amazing things. I don't know. Calvin, is this still going, or did it blow into little bits? Yeah, it's still going. Okay. So this is the cropper add-on. All right. Well, then, Kyle, I'm going to send you to Margaret. Margaret will talk to you about scheduling you into the thing. So this is the yeah. add-on that we built that, remember, we were doing cropping pictures. I was cropping pictures of helicopters or whatever, right, right in the, in the container. So you get a container with too much stuff in it. Uh, having this as an add-on is great. I think this is awesome. So then how do we – okay, you keep putting this on uh, – what happened? Yeah, so uh, it installed, and now I'm just trying to add it to the layout. And it's not doing it. Go scroll. There it goes. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So I'm not sure if it was adding it in the background or what. Body it's just part. acting yeah. a little strange. So we right have to now. target the beginning container and then the after the fact came container, right? And there's something like that. How do we do that? Uh, yeah, so so the uh, so what all we have to do? Yeah, I is know Calvin. Calvin. Up. Calvin should just be doing this, not in starting point. He's confusing everyone with too much crap. But yes. So this, we will this app right here. Okay, yeah. Well, why don't you get through this, and I will kind of explain this. Okay. Calvin, yeah, this is a uh, mess, a hell of a mess, because no one can see your stuff because you dumped it on the busiest layout in starting point. If the goal was to overwhelm people, you've done that. Their little brains are exploded. Moki's dead. User Mac is dead. Kyle may or may not be dead. I'm not sure. The bodies are piling up. Okay, so I drag, drag and dropped the crop button next to my uh, container field. Mm -hmm. And then we updated the script parameter to reference this contact container photo. Mm -hmm. So if we looked at the script parameter, we are, it, it's a let statement. It's, it's commented out right now, right? So. Yep. And so I added the get oh, field name and then put the container there and put it as the result as well. Oh, so it's going to overwrite itself. So there's no like undo. Okay, got it. There's no yeah, real undo. Yeah, there's not going to be an undo. Okay, so it's going to. And so let's go to uh, back to browse mode. So you folks will see this pop up. Hopefully you left all the cr uh, credits in there. Yeah, it, it has all that in there. And oh, there we crop. go. So there we are. So we're going to hit the crop button. It pops up the image. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, right now it's set as a one-to-one. -one. Once again, it's in the coding. This, it, it's, it's, yeah. Well, why don't we, yeah, go ahead and hit save and run through it. So this application, uh, did you leave all the readme stuff in there about this thing? about how this worked with these guys? Yeah, so if, if you want to take a look at more information on this, then uh, you can see in the add-on, or when, after it's installed, you can go to, under crop image, and the all of the information is right in here, all the original uh, stuff. Okay, so, so there, here... There, yeah, this is the original here, and this was created by the gene.com folks. Japanese mm -hmm. uh, FileMaker developers. So this cropper is really fantastic. It uses JavaScript. It's really simple. It's really reliable. Um, if we can go to the scripts, we can turn off the one-to-one uh, -one ratio thing. In fact, that should be off on your add-ons anyway, as a general rule, or comment it out. So let's okay. go to the scripts. Uh, where's the scripts for this thing at? Crop, crop image. image. Scroll down. 
is a crop image license. Okay, so what you do is you got, of course, you got, you know, various things in English and Japanese. Okay, where are you? What are you doing here? Uh, I was just trying to find the... So you're going to scroll this. down. It, it's, it's real simple. Keep going. Scroll down. Keep going. Keep going. It'll stick out. Okay, it's not that one. It's probably the, it's probably the crop image or whatever one. That's the license. Uh, save, save, to, save, or, crop, save to crop. Try that one. Scroll down. Yeah. Slow down. Looking, looking. I've done this before. Keep going. It's not that hidden. Close image. Mm. Maybe it's the go-to. Okay, try because... that one. Because... That's where you're opening the... Okay, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. You'll see a kind of a one something. There's a, Okay, here's the JavaScript. It's starting to run the JavaScript. So it's a setting that I think we inject into the JavaScript. Keep going. Okay, keep going. There's some phone code, some desktop iPad code. Uh, where is it? I know it's in here. I know it's in here, Calvin. We're going to have to have you come yeah, back tomorrow. Yeah, I'll have to have to. It's in here because scroll, down, scroll up, back up again. Let's see. It was a setting that was set. Oh, uh, here ratio. Yeah, there it is. Uh, oh, so rate. Okay, stop ratio. Okay, so where is that set? Cancel that out. Uh, wait a minute. What's it's in the crop info field. Okay, so where's the crop in crop image crop. Is it set somewhere else? Crop, original, crop. Okay, go to a different one, crop info. Yeah, so it's set. Yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, let me just see what, if we bring that field up, mm -hmm. what we see in that was the crop info. It's going to be like a number. Okay, you're overdoing it here, Chief. Okay. It's going to be like the number one or something or two or one to two or something like that. Unless it's a global. Okay, so here's the ratio. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. I would have never come up with a number that big. All right, you have a homework assignment. You get to come back okay. tomorrow and explain this to us, right? Because I don't All want right. to bang my head All right, we'll figure it out. Wall. Uh, Boki says, I'll just use my mom. Hey, mom, read this. I'm assuming mom <laughs> is Japanese, right? Yeah, so that's the problem with that. It's in here. Listen, I found it one night, but the problem is, Calvin, um, because uh, either you want, it, you want to set the ratio because you need it for a specific reason, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or you don't want it in a specific reason. Um, and so uh, let me pop this down. We were, we were, I was using this, we were trying, I was building an application for the sales uh, organization that was selling, of all things, helicopters, which is kind of crazy. Um, if I go to FileMaker Pro, I say open. So all these are images that you drop in here. Notice how they all are uniform over here on the left on the, and they're very, and they fit in here. The reason is we forced a two to one ratio on the crappie thing in here, right? So, um, we, I integrate this in here. You drop an image in here, and then you would uh, crop it. And when it cropped it, it would force it out as a. T this is a two to one. So it, but it causes it all to look very nice and very, uh, you know, very organized, like almost like it's like professional, right? Kind of cool. So anyway, very neat. Uh, read it into the clubhouse and tribe scrum. Yeah. So you got to come over here. You got a, the J crop, and then the layout crop and then the info and then somewhere in here buried is the the value where you set the value at right and uh when you do that then it all works uh, amazingly well there's the license i don't think anything was the license but i, I this is something we did not create we did built it in, in as an add-on but the reality is that it um definitely made by these folks at gen gene.com i guess and uh, they've done a really nice, oh, there it is right there. It's in this script right here. It's called aspect ratio right here, okay? So aspect ratio, it's set in the go-to layout crop. Okay, so I'm just going to set two to one right there. I'm gonna just make it 
nothing. I hit save, and then if I try to crop, if I drop it in here, I think it triggers on auto. Oh, it triggers it on an automatic open, right? Now, oop, is it not working? Mm, okay, so now I don't have any sort of uh, of uh, cropper tool in here, right? So that's the problem. Cancel. So uh, what if I put zero in there? Save, right? And then I put the image on there. Pop up. Oh, there it is. So zero, I think, is it. Ah, there you go. Woo! Never send Calvin to do a boss's job, right? So then the ratio is unlocked. So zero is whatever you want. It had no ratio before. Then I hit save. And now it ejects the stupid tail rotor shot up there. It doesn't fit anymore because we didn't enforce a ratio, right? There you go. Right click. I'm not sure what right click in Japanese. All right, so. Very cool. Yeah, you like that? Woo! Yeah, so the, so the ratio can be useful if you don't want it to look like ass. Like in the database, every picture looks different, right? If you want it to look uniform and whatever, right? Because remember, if you think about it, you're just trying to get an idea of what it looks like. You don't need all the moving pieces and the pictures and stuff, right? Well, tomorrow is going to be uh, Christian Schmidt from uh, Gorilla Bread Software. We're very excited to have him over here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. Qu Calvin, any questions that you have? Thoughts, ideas, you want to show us your face? Uh, let me uh, turn I like that. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Uh, no, monkey bread. I'm, I'm looking forward to the monkey bread presentation tomorrow. It There's, should be good. Uh, it should be good. Like saying, do uh, all the, the ways we can expand FileMaker with plugins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Yep, yep, with plugins, it's a good way. This stuff is kind of the same way. The add-ons are kind of a way of ex extending it without a plugin. Um, and it, it's based on the quality. The, 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 that JavaScript, the thing that you just saw right there, pretty damn reliable. I like it. Uh, that's why Calvin, they made an add-on on it. But we just have to probably document that ratio lock part of it before you before you uh, cook the next one that goes into the right. uh, version for Wolfpack. And I guess it's going to be Wolfpack version 4 or version 5 or whatever it is. So for those of you wondering about that. Um, and then Ken says he's actually incorporating it into an add-on, into, into, into a solution. That's why we're here. We're here to make your lives better and more awesome. Because it's already awesome because FileMaker, you're using FileMaker. But if we can help you get over the last hurdle or hump to be successful, that's the goal for what we want to do. It really is. So Calvin's awesome. We greatly appreciate it, everyone. If you have comments or questions, send an email to support at rcconsulting.com. The tech support team will answer your question and or will forward to Calvin or forward to me. If you have a, a thought or a topic you would like to see covered, Carol from Oakland, AC73, uh, WJ Warner, is the Wolfpack updated as of, 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 of this moment? Uh, it will be updated next week. So to remind everyone, we gave you the links today to get this specific add-on. Um, but we're taking all the add-ons that Calvin's doing from last week, from this week, from next week. And next week, we're going to roll them all into the Wolf, the latest version of the Wolfpack. So you'll be able to download the new Wolfpack next week and get these there. Or you can just use the link today that I gave you to get just the one from today. Does that make sense? So we want to... We didn't want to deep updating Wolfpack every week was the idea. It's like, uh, is it we updated every week because it's like a giant pain in the ass to do that. So, because um, it's a free product, right? So, what are we going to do? Great. I'll see everyone tomorrow. Appreciate it, Kyle. Make sure you find Margaret, get on the calendar schedule, and figure out, you know, budget stuff like that, right? See ya. Just stepped up the whole way. Calm, cool, collected the quarterback. 
great read, good patience, more importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Try to rally down 10, 925 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot, goes step, stands in, throws it left for Amendola, reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10, rolling to the 9. Ball slightly behind him, but Danny makes the grab.